Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Microsoft Edge. Now, you might be wondering, what's Microsoft Edge doing on a channel about Linux? And the answer to that is that it has a Linux client, so I thought I'd talk about it. The question I have to ask today is, why would you use it? And I'm not the type of sort who goes out and says all proprietary software is bad. I don't think that that's true. I use a lot of proprietary software. I use... Uh, Todoist and I use Notion all the time. Those things are proprietary. I use them. I enjoy using them. I don't feel guilty because I haven't found an open source alternative to them. So my opposition to Microsoft Edge isn't because it's done by Microsoft. It's not done because it's proprietary garbage. It's not any of those things. My opposition comes is because I'm confused as to why it exists. And I'll talk about that now. So let's go ahead and jump in, shall we? Okay, so this is Microsoft Edge. Now, this is the dev channel release. This is the most recent version. And I've been using it off and on now for, I don't know, maybe a week or so. And my overwhelming conclusion after having used it for so long is that it's good but I don't know why you'd use it. If you're going to use something used based on Chromium, I guess, Chromium, you should just use Chromium or use Google Chrome. Or use Brave. I mean, I would say use Brave, but Brave at least is open source and has some unique features going for it. Chromium seems to have been defanged with all the them taking all the Google stuff out of it. And Google Chrome is, well, I mean, it's Google Chrome, right? For Microsoft Edge... What exactly is the draw? And you can say that it has some neat features. So it has something called collections that you can go through and like save stuff for later. It's kind of like a pocket alternative from what I've been able to experience. I haven't actually signed in, so it's not as useful as it probably would be if I signed into a Microsoft account. It has these vertical tabs here along the side, but this is just tree tab. That's all this is, is tree tab. I mean, it's, a, it's precisely what you can get in Firefox and Chrome with, a, with an extension. So the only difference here is that it comes built in. You don't have to have an extension. The extensions themselves, like the extension store itself, I guess I should say, is not as expansive as Chrome or Firefox. So, so it, you, don't, you don't have access to all the extensions you'd have if you used one of the main browsers. Now, granted, you can use the Chromium web store on this as well, I believe. I don't know whether or not you have to go through an extra step in order to do so. I didn't explore that you know, far, so I don't know. So I kept asking myself as I used the browser over the past week, why would you use it? What does this give you that using Chromium doesn't or using Google Chrome doesn't or using Firefox doesn't? Why would you use it? And the only answer to that question I can give is that if you're entrenched in the Microsoft ecosystem, so you use Office all the time, you use Skype, you use Teams, all these things, then Edge makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of integration into Microsoft services. Supposedly, I'm not entrenched in the Microsoft ecosystem, so I have no clue, but there are advantages to using it if you use teams and stuff and that's the only reason i can see i guess if you maybe if you use edge on the mobile on android or something or on ios then maybe it's a good thing to have it on the desktop as well because you can sync them back and forth uh why you couldn't just do that in chrome or whatever or in better yet in firefox i'm not sure so the other thing i was thinking about is that really the reason why this exists is that uh, is because Microsoft needed a competitor to Google Chrome, and no one was using Edge before it adopted the Chromium Web Engine Blink or whatever it's called. So they just decided to take Chromium and fork it basically, and create their own version of it. That's the reason why it exists. Why they can have done us all a favor and fork Firefox, that would have been so much better. I mean, I don't know if, if they would have had success with it, because they seem to have had success with this new Chromium-based version of Edge. A lot of people seem to like it. I personally think it's 
kind of ugly. I mean, it's just so flat. I mean, there's just, I mean, granted, this may look like this just because I'm in a, a window manager and not in like a, you know, a desktop environment, but there's just so much empty space here. Now I could, that changes if I go through and move the tabs up here, but then it just looks like Chrome. I mean, it looks, I mean, if you're going to do something different, at least do something different. I mean, <laughs> this is just Google Chrome. I mean, it has some extra features like RSS parsing or something, and it has the collections thing, and it has the vertical tabs, but overall, it's just Google Chrome with Microsoft bits enabled. So instead of having a Google account that you sign in to sync stuff, you sign in with your Microsoft account. That's literally all it is, and I don't get it. Maybe it's because I'm a Firefox user and I would have preferred to have seen, you know, Firefox have a chance at being mainstream, being supported by Microsoft or whatever. Uh, but for the most part, I think that the reason why I just don't get it is because like it's just so much a clone of what we already have. Supposedly, there are some privacy benefits, but the whole question of privacy really between Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge really comes down to which major international corporation you trust most with your data. And the answer to that should be neither of them. I mean, technically, Google's way worse at taking data and using it for profit than Microsoft is, but Microsoft's not that much better. They still run their own ad business. They still run their own browser and uh, search engine and stuff. So it's not as if they're the paragon of virtue and, and privacy that Google is not. They're basically the same. So you can't argue that Microsoft edge here is like the privacy browser it's, it's just not i mean is it a little bit better on privacy i don't know maybe i i have a there's just a general feeling whether or not it's a, a true feeling or not there's a feeling that microsoft is less willing or excuse me that microsoft is more willing to put privacy focus first than google is whether like i said whether or not that's a true feeling i don't know it's just maybe. So the question is, should you use Microsoft Edge? And the answer to that question is, if you're working in a corporate environment that is entrenched in the Microsoft ecosystem, which most of them are, I guess a lot of them are moving over towards Google's ecosystem. But if you work in that situation, then you're probably just going to use Edge because that's what your corporate overlords have said. To do. There's nothing wrong with using Edge on Linux if you want to use Edge on Linux, but I think that there are better options. Uh, mainly, if you're just going to use, if you if you're looking for a Chromium-based browser, just use Chrome. You're going to get all the benefits of what you need from Chrome from Chrome better than you'll get from Microsoft. Really, that's the way it feels. Uh, and I mean, I couldn't notice a, a significant speed difference in any of the browsers that I tried. So they're all fast enough. Uh, so, I mean, the benefits appear to be who do you, tr or I guess the question appears to be who do you trust more to run your browser, Microsoft or Google? And uh, I would answer that question with, I don't trust either of them. I'm going to use Firefox. I don't really trust Firefox either, but I trust them more than Google and Microsoft. So uh, moral of the story, use Firefox. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow us on Facebook at the LinuxCast. You can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash LinuxCast. With that in mind, I would like to thank our current patrons, Devon, Zach, Marcus, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.